Good morning. We are taking a break from Psalms and we are coming back to the Gospel according to Luke. In preparation to the coming Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday in about two weeks time. The preaching at this pulpit follows closely, if not exactly, the Daily Bible, which many of you have a copy. We started from Luke chapter 1 in our first service, right, in the beginning of the year, where we thank God for sort of re allowing us to regather back in church to worship Him. We will be reading through the entire Luke, the death, the resurrection, and the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, right, probably just on Tuesday, 6th of April, just after the, good, the Resurrection Sunday. The preaching is not just on a particular passage itself, but it is to help you in your reading of the words of God. Though we are not able to cover every passage of your reading daily. Zacchaeus, the story of Zacchaeus, a very familiar story to many of us, if not all of us, if you grew up through the Sunday school, you know, in any churches. It is the good news for the rich. Well, we spoke about money and the riches about twice just this last 10 weeks itself. Right? We talk about money was not neutral. We talk about no one can serve two master and significantly or most importantly, we cannot serve money and serve God at the same time. Riches cannot be trusted in times of crisis and needs. But in today's sermon, you will find a story about a rich man being sought out by God Himself, by our Lord Jesus Christ. And he was being declared by our Lord Jesus Christ as righteous. Let's pray. Father God, we praise you and we thank you. What is impossible to man is possible with God. When there seems to be no hope, we find hope in you. Speak to us that we will rejoice with your assurance that we will find when we seek ye first your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, just let me quickly give you a context of today's passage. First of all, it is a unique story in the Gospel of Luke. It was not recorded in the other three Gospels. Not in the Gospel of Matthew, not in the Gospel of Mark, not in the Gospel of John. So the question is, why does Luke record it for us? Bear this question in our mind or in our heart as we look for the answer in today's sermon and let the inspired Word of God by Dr. Luke tell us at the end of today's passage. The story actually happens right before Jesus entering into Jerusalem and it is part of the very long travel journey from Luke chapter 9 verse 51 all the way to chapter 19. Right, so it is about close to 10 chapters recording the journey of Jesus coming down from Galilee right all the way down to Jerusalem to complete and to finish the work God the Father have given to him. According to the Gospel of John, actually we knew that Jesus actually traveling had been traveling up and down from Galilee to Jerusalem over the three years period many times and at least over three Passover. So Luke portrays it as one single journey from chapter 9 all the way to chapter 19. He has collected many of his teaching and many of the, his healing and miracles during this particular journey, specifically for one very important message. And that message will be covered at the end of today's uh, sermon. Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Chapter 19, verse 1. The first verse of Luke chapter 19 set the entire stage of the story of Zacchaeus. This is a very simple map I did not send to you via WhatsApp, but I think that you will roughly be able to know that from Capernaum 
that is the main so-called operating headquarter of our Lord Jesus Christ when he was ministering in the entire region of Galilee. And when he traveled all the way down, right, through, right, Bashan, he did not enter in into Samaria this time. And he traveled to the so-called east, coming down to the river Jordan and all the way into Jericho. Jericho was not the destination of Jesus. We all know that. Jerusalem was. But Luke recorded two very important events when he so-called entering and into Jericho. One is when Jesus was about to enter into Jericho. Luke chapter 18, just before today's passage itself, Jesus heals a blind beggar. And that particular story was covered in all the three synoptic gospels, in Matthew, Mark, and in Luke. The name of the blind beggar was Bartimaeus. He cried out to Jesus. He can't see Jesus. He cried out to Jesus, and Jesus stopped and asked someone to bring him to Jesus. And Jesus asked him, What do you want? And Bartimaeus said, I want my sight to regain my sight. I want to see. And Jesus restored his sight because he saw that this man has the faith to be healed. And then he entered into Jerusalem and today's story, the story of Zacchaeus, was so-called built upon the story of Jesus healing the blind beggar. Because probably because of what Jesus had done just before he entered into Jerusalem, Zacchaeus, the man, the so-called the protagonist could have heard about what Jesus have done and therefore Jesus, Zacchaeus wanted to see who this Jesus was. Okay, we talk about Jericho. We know where is Jericho. That is probably a little bit northeast of Jerusalem. But what is Jericho? What is the city of Jericho? Well, one preacher that I've heard in this week as I was meditating about the story of Zacchaeus, he sort of compared Jericho as some form of modern-day Las Vegas, right, in the city, in the so-called state of California. So it is a city of extravagance. It is a rich city in the ancient Palestinian land. That is, or that was Jericho in Jesus' time. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector and he was rich. Luke called his readers into attention. Behold, there was a man. Zacchaeus, a Jewish name. And it is actually a so-called a Greek form. Zacchaeus, is, although it's a Jewish name, but the Bible that we have received Right, it was first written in the Greek language in the New Testament, and so it was transliterated the Hebrew name Zakai. The name of Zacchaeus actually meant clean and innocent. But this was probably the hope of the parent of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was anything but so called clean and innocent before he met Jesus. Zacchaeus was probably a man that was being viewed as a traitor, as per our deacon Sean have just mentioned. He was a Jew, and yet he worked for the Roman government, the so-called oppressor, the, rule, the foreign ruling to power, to sort of extract, to extort money, from, extort money from the Jews to pay the Roman government. So he was not a welcome character as far as the Jews was concerned. And he was a chief tax collector. Well, if you recall, Jesus has a disciple, also a tax collector, by the name of Matthew. But Matthew was only a tax collector and Zacchaeus was the chief tax collector. So basically, whatever the tax collector have received, Zacchaeus would have a share, a cut of it. And he was rich. How rich was Zacchaeus? 
Well, basically, that uh, we are not able to use today context to compare um, how rich was Zacchaeus. But we basically just need to remember, as far as Luke was concerned, he used the word rich in about 11 times in the gospel itself. And out of these 11 times, many times he talked about the rich, the rich, the rich. So Zacchaeus was rich. And if you sort of compare it with what Luke have recorded in about two chapters ago, previously, in chapter 17, talk about the rich young ruler that also have heard about Jesus, came to Jesus and asked Jesus that he wanted to follow Jesus. He was, the rich young ruler was also seeking out Jesus and wanted to follow Jesus. And Jesus turned and asked him, if you want to follow me, sell everything and follow me. The rich young ruler could not do so because he was rich. So at that time, we all say, or the Bible actually recorded for us, the people say, then who could be saved? If a rich young ruler could not be saved, who could be saved? And Jesus said, Right, although being rich is difficult, but nothing is impossible with God. So today is the good news for those who are rich. And in actually in our context, in the Bible context, anyone that has a roof over his head and has food to eat is considered rich. So it is the good news for the rich. The rich young ruler sought out Jesus but he was not found by Jesus. Zacchaeus, as we all know, we have heard our sister Chelsea have read for us, Zacchaeus was being declared righteous, was being declared safe by Jesus. Zacchaeus was seeking to see who Jesus was, and he found Jesus. But before he found Jesus, he had actually had two problems. He was seeking to see Jesus, but... There are two problems ahead of him. First was the cloud. The crowd was, well, it is, the second was because he was short. But what was the problem of having the crowd? Other than, I think the first thing that comes into our mind is because he was short, so the crowd was blocking him. No. Actually, if you read deeper, the crowd were the one, majority of them were the Jews. And the Jews did not like Zacchaeus. So if Zacchaeus tried to push his way in, he probably come up with a bruised eyes and probably a broken ribs. Not because he was uh, trying to go and squeeze his way out. No, because the Jews will probably took this took that particular situation and beat him up since nobody can see it was crowd. So Zacchaeus faced with a crowd. He could not squeeze himself in. But he was courageous and he was clever. He ran ahead. He ran ahead and climbed out a sycamore tree. Well, there are many speculations, right? First of all, we know that was a tree, a tree that is leafy, a tree that was having short trunk and easily to climb out, a tree that is able to sort of give him a chance to have a bird eye view. But many scholars actually read into it that probably this was also a tree that he was being so-called, give him the so-called cover, uh, cam camouflage. That he was shielded off, that he would not be sort of pulled down by the crowd and beat him up. It was also befitting that he was a chief tax collector. And the people would be look at him very funny and say, you are doing something that doesn't befit you being an official, or official of collecting tax, official working for the government. But yet, later on, we all know actually he was found by Jesus even though he was taking cover. Not just he is able to have a bird eye view of Jesus, he was able to cover himself from the crowd but Jesus still found him. And when Jesus came to the place to the, under the tree, Jesus looked up. There's so many trees. And today, if you go to the Jericho area, you will still be able to see the sycamore tree. 
and you will be able to see a lot of trees but you probably will not sort of look up especially when you are being followed with a crowd but Jesus stopped Jesus looked up and Jesus said to Zacchaeus Zacchaeus Jesus called his name how did Zac Jesus knew know his name so every scholar was trying to look at it that if you look at the map just now Jesus could have traveled directly down south from Galilee all the way to Jerusalem but yet he detoured he detoured and he intentionally chose to go past Jericho so Jesus knew not just the blind Bartimaeus that he has enough faith to be healed to be restored the eyesight Zacchaeus would receive him would believe in him Zacchaeus would be saved so Jesus stopped and called out Zacchaeus' name. This could have shocked, give Zacchaeus a shock. And Jesus commanded, hurry and come down. Well, the word come down is a command. It's in the imperative verb itself. Jesus said, come down. But when Jesus said, come down, Jesus was inviting himself to say that, I want to come to your place to have a meal. This was probably one of the only times Jesus had many meals recorded in the four Gospels. But this was probably one of the first times that Jesus invited himself to go to Zacchaeus' house to have a meal. Usually are the people who wanted to get Jesus, the rabbi, teacher, the prophet, to have a meal. But this time, Jesus said, I want to come to your house to have a meal. Jesus was actually seeking out Zacchaeus. Jesus called his name and said, Come down and I want to eat at your place. And I want to stay overnight at your place. Seek and be found. That was the title that I have given to this particular passage. If you check in the internet, into the YouTube, there are many, many titles given on this passage itself. Right, the first thought that I have come, I have uh, sort of thinking of it to entitle this particular passage itself. I say that seek and you will find. Then I find that no, it is actually not that Zacchaeus found Jesus. It is actually Jesus found Zacchaeus. Lost and found, seek and be found. So Zacchaeus hurried and came down and received him joyfully joyfully Zacchaeus was not only found by Jesus he responded obediently at Jesus command to stay at his house to eat in his place in the original language there was a very insignificant word if I use the word insignificant it's the word die D-E-I basically it means that it is necessary but this necessary has a lot of theo theological meaning. It is a divine necessity. Jesus said, I must, it is necessary for me to eat at your place. Jesus initiated to seek and to save Zacchaeus. But Zacchaeus will have to first respond, respond to Jesus' invitation. The rich young ruler did not obey, could not respond because he was too rich. But Zacchaeus responded. Zacchaeus responded joyfully. And when they saw it, who were the day? Well, the day was the crowd, as being recorded just about two verses before. Zacchaeus was deemed to be, by the crowd to be a sinner. No one can self-declare to be not a sinner, but everyone in that locality considered Zacchaeus to be a sinner. He was not welcomed by anybody. They considered Zacchaeus to be more sinful than himself. 
Zacchaeus was deemed to be a traitor to helping the Roman government to oppress the Jews. How could you as a Jew go and help the Roman government? And so on and so forth. And also perhaps they would consider Zacchaeus was not being honest. Yes, the name of Zacchaeus is innocent and clean, but Zacchaeus was probably perceived as not being honest. Why? Because in the Roman culture at that time, the Roman would declare a particular region and say that I must collect that much from this particular region. Anything less, the so-called chief tax collector has to come out from his own pocket. But anything more, it will be the cut that the chief tax collector can receive. So, every, read in between the line, every tax collector would have collected more so that not only they can pay off their so-called quota required by the Roman government, they will be able to enrich themselves. So no one liked a tax collector and there was no CPIB, a corrupt practice investigation department that you can launch a complaint to. So they just disliked Zacchaeus. And now they found that Jesus, being called a rabbi, invited himself to go and dine with a sinner. The crowd couldn't understand and they grumbled, they murmured. How could Jesus, a rabbi, a prophet, who knew who Zacchaeus was, a sinner and wanted to eat with a sinner? Well, many a times we really call another person a sinner and forgotten that we too are sinners. And worse still, what a person we call sinner, seeking and are found by Jesus, instead of rejoicing with that person, we grumble and we murmur. There probably between that verse and to this verse itself, there probably there was some conversation between Zacchaeus and Jesus and it was not recorded down for us. But Zacchaeus should have been converted during his conversation when Zacchaeus received Jesus joyfully. But here, Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, half of my goods I give to the poor. Zacchaeus did not do this to earn his salvation. No one, the Bible, the entire Bible have said, no one can work and earn his salvation. If someone can earn and gain his salvation, then the salvation would not have been considered free. Salvation would not have been considered by grace. So Zacchaeus did not wanted to share what he has, whether it is half or anything, which I'm going to come to that later, that one can never earn his salvation. Zacchaeus received his salvation by believing in Jesus. And now, after believing Jesus, Zacchaeus was responding with the belief, with the salvation, that he wanted to do something that is correct. And not only do something that is correct, Zacchaeus wanted to do more than what is required by the Mosaic law, by the Torah at that time. At that time, according to Leviticus, if you have done, normally you would have shared, you have returned 20% of what you have taken. And now Zacchaeus said, I want to share 50% for the poor. He did more than what was required. And if you have stolen something, you would have returned fourfold. That was the reason behind that he wanted to restore if he had defrauded someone. But if there's something that he has taken, the ship, that one was in Leviticus, is referring to the ship. If he has stolen a ship and it found, right, that you have to restore four, fourfold. But if the ship is still alive, then you only need to return double, two ship. And now Zacchaeus just say, in response to the joy of receiving the salvation from Jesus, Zacchaeus said, I will share 50%. So that was not to earn, but that was in response to the salvation he received. 
compare that, always remember that with not too long ago when the rich young ruler could not do it because he was rich. Zacchaeus was also rich, but Zacchaeus responded. Zacchaeus become a master of the money, master of the possession that the Lord has given to him. He was not a slave to the money that he was given. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he also is a son of Abraham. Zacchaeus was a Jew. Everybody know that. So he was already a physical son of Abraham. But why did Jesus emphasize now he was a son of Abraham? He was a son of Abraham by faith. He was a spiritual son of Abraham because Abraham was considered righteous because he believed. Abraham believed that he was being considered as righteous. So now Zacchaeus was also considered not just not only as a physical Jew, a son of Abraham, but a spiritual son of Abraham. We too, who believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, are spiritual son of Abraham. So Zacchaeus received because he believed in Jesus. And how do we know that he believed? From the work, from the way that he wanted to say, I give 50%. Money is no longer the issue. Because he knew that everything he has was first given by God. And this particular the verse that I will encourage all of you, especially the youth and the teacher, to encourage the, your youth to memorize this verse. Because this particular verse, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost, was the main so-called theme, main verse, the key verse of the entire Gospel of Luke. Yes, we all know that the Gospel of Luke talk a lot about the Passion Week which you are going to read daily from now until next Friday, the Good Friday itself. But this is the main verse that Luke recorded his entire gospel. Because in chapter 15, he talked about the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. The entire gospel referred to why did Jesus come to be incarnated as a man. Why did Jesus die on the cross? It's all because he came to seek and to save the lost. Jesus detoured to Jericho before he entered into Jerusalem. He wanted to seek and to save the lost. The blind Bartimaeus, the so-called rich Zacchaeus. Regardless of the situation, Jesus wanted to save those who seek after him. So the main idea for today's passage is Jesus Christ comes to seek and to save those who are lost and seeking him. I have added the qualifier. The rich young ruler was lost, but the rich young ruler was not seeking him. Zacchaeus was lost, but Zacchaeus sought after Jesus. Seek and be found because Jesus first seek after us. The lessons learned. Jesus comes to seek and to save the lost. It is probably the most important key lesson that I want you to take away from, you, uh, from this particular sermon today. If you leave this place, if you have forgotten everything that I've said, remember chapter 19, verse 10. Jesus comes to seek and to save the lost. The lessons for today, Jesus comes to seek and to save the lost. But it is not just enough. I want you to also remember the other two points. Seek Jesus and you are sure to be found. Seek Jesus and you are sure to be found. Jesus is not playing hide and seek with us. Jesus wants us to seek Him 
And Jesus said, I am here. I want to be found. You, if you seek me, you can find me. That is what Jesus is extending his invitation to all of us. And the next, the third lesson, that is a response from us who seek Jesus. You and I have sought him. Therefore, you and I have found him and have found by him. But there is this third point that we want to learn from just these 10 verses. A very simple story that Zacchaeus served Jesus with his possession. Do we serve Jesus after receiving his salvation with our possession? Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 is the verse that I want to sort of share that with you to help you to remember today's passage. Jesus said, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Jesus is standing here in front of the door and say, I am here. I come all the way to before your heart, before your door, before your house. I am knocking. You just need to do is to open. If you are seeking me, you will open and I will come sing. If you seek me, I will be found. So as a reflection for all of us, have I sought to see Jesus? Have I sought to see Jesus? Have I sought His salvation? For those who have not, I encourage you to talk to each one of us after the service. We wanted to share with you how you can find Jesus. But I know majority of you have found Jesus. So the second question that I want you to think through for today and especially during the singing of the reflection song. Am I seeking to see Jesus? Your salvation is not a thing of the past. Your salvation is today. The joy of salvation is every day. We don't just seek Jesus and found Jesus probably a month ago, one year ago for those of you who attended the baptism class or for many of you that probably 10 years ago when you started learning right under your, your parents your parents would have taught you during the Sunday school no, I'm talking about am I seeking Jesus every day and you be sure you seek and you will be found by Jesus you seek for the joy of Jesus David knew Jesus or should I say at that time David knew about the Lord Yahweh the great Adonai I am but he has lost the joy of salvation when he sinned against God when he sinned against Bathsheba and in Psalm 51 you heard Psalm 51 not from me yes I speak I preach but it is actually from the Lord he has lost the joy of salvation and he has to confess to get that back. So I'm urging you, seek Jesus every day and he will find you and you will find the joy of your salvation. And may I end by having the last bullet. Have I, how have I gained and used my possession now that you have found jesus now that you're seeking jesus every day and you find jesus how have you been using the gift jesus has given to you you know how zacchaeus have used his possession he shared he looked for the poor he looked for the needy he looked for the marginalized what about us so as you sort of close your eyes and think through these three questions that I have put up onto the screen. And as I invite our worship leader to come 
and lead us into singing the song of a reflection. I ask you to remember, are you seeking Jesus every day? Are you?